Science, Chapter 5, Ecosystems. An ecosystem includes all the living and non-living things that interact in a given area. You can think of an ecosystem as a neighborhood of living things. So how does the meaning of ecosystem differ from the words environment and habitat? An environment is one geographic area. Ecosystems also include a sense of the flow of energy and matter. Ecosystems vary widely in size. An ecosystem may be as large as a huge lake or as small as a moss-covered rock. Do you think the single tree is an example of an ecosystem? Yes. Yes, it is. There are other organisms that live their entire lives getting everything they need without ever leaving the tree. This tree is also part of a much larger ecosystem, the Central American Forest Ecosystem. Some of these forests cover vast areas, but all the living and non-living things compose the Central American Forest Ecosystem. Ecosystems contain living things. Ecosystems are made up of many, thing, many kinds of organisms, including producers, consumers, and decomposers. These organisms depend on one another for food and energy. In an ecosystem, producers make energy from the sun. Consumers eat the producers, and some consumers eat other consumers. Finally, decomposers help break down matter and energy and return it to the earth. This helps new plants grow again. A healthy ecosystem has many different types of living things in it. Most of the, those living things interact in some way and depend on one another, either directly or indirectly. Ecosystems also contain non-living things. The living things in an ecosystem also depend on the non-living environment. Factors such as temperature, rainfall, fog, wind, and sunlight all affect the ecosystem. Water. Every living thing needs water to survive. Most animals live in or near a pond, stream, river, or o ocean. Even when water cannot be seen, living things have ways to find hidden sources. Animals can eat fruits or plants to get the water stored inside. Plants use their roots to find water deep within the soil and to collect water quickly from the soil when it rains. Rainwater is an important part of many ecosystems. Think about a tropical rainforest. These places get a lot of rain, so a lot of plants can grow there. The rainwater also provides water to the animals. Now think about a desert ecosystem. Deserts do not get a lot of rain, yet they still support the organisms that live there. How is this possible? Many plants and animals have adapted to the conditions in deserts. For example, the cactus is a plant that does not need a lot of constant water to grow. When it rains in the desert, some cacti soak up the rainwater and store it in their trunks for months or years, using it as a reserve supply to keep them hydrated until it rains again. Animals that live in deserts have learned to find ways to get water out of the cacti, such as by drilling holes into the trunks or drinking the water from the fruit. Sunlight and Soil Sunlight and the types of sediment and soil are important non-living parts of ecosystems. Producers need sunlight to make food. Getting more sunlight means producers can make more food. In turn, this allows them to provide more food and more homes to other organisms. Different textures of soils may hold water or allow it to drain away more quickly. The type of soil affects the types of plants that can take root and survive in a place. Compare the soil where the plants in these two photos are growing. Which type of soil seems to support a greater variety of plant life? The forest or the beach? Shelter. Living things need shelter to survive. They may depend on non-living things such as rocks, burrows in the ground, or shells that their own bodies produce to make their home. Organisms may depend on other living things for shelter, such as a tree branch, a coral reef, or the mouth of an animal. In fact, your own body is an ecosystem that supports millions of other organisms. 
The human body contains many types of bacteria that are not only har- harmless, but also helpful to your health. Your mouth is an ecosystem for millions of harmless bacteria. It provides shelter as well as moisture and food. Ecosystems vary greatly. Ecosystems can be in any size. They can span from the very small, such as a small pond, to the very large, such as miles and miles of deep ocean. The Great Barrier Reef in eastern Australia is an ecosystem that is 14,300 miles long. This is a very large ecosystem. An aquarium is an example of an artificial ecosystem that is very small. An aquarium can be made with just one or two gallons of water. In a tank, a person can put everything a fish needs to survive. Even a single drop of pond water can be an ecosystem. It can have everything necessary for tiny plankton to live their lives. The things that large and small ecosystems have in common is that they both contain the things that are necessary for organisms to survive. When you think of the word ecosystem, think of three things. A well-defined area, all the living things in it, and all the non-living things that are a part of it.